Good morning, everyone. I see a lot of people are joining from all over the world. I see South Africa, Croatia, a couple of people, Netherlands, Tunisia, Germany. Good morning. Kalimera, uh, Solustus uh, Partner of Tunelada. Uh, I see also UK and United Arab Emirates uh, joining. It's uh, very good to see. Switzerland, Austria, that's perfect. We have a lot of people from around the world. Denmark, hello, Stefan. He's one of our main partners as well. That's really great to see, guys. I'm very excited. Okay, so it's 10.05. I think we can uh, slowly begin uh, and uh, yeah, and we can just start the webinar then. So welcome everyone to the webinar about the version 4.4 of uh, Axon Next VMS from Axonsoft. So uh, today, uh, first of all, I would like to take the opportunity to tell you a little bit, uh, some facts about Axonsoft. So uh, as many of you may be well known, we've been on the market for 16 years. We're a global company, of course, with around 50 offices around the world, and we have around 550 employees who are working nonstop to offer you the best product solutions that uh, we can. Uh, our software supports over 2.5 million licensed video channels already. And of course, our brand's DNA is it's VMS integrated with AI analytics and forensic search. Axon VMS has also added recently uh, cloud solutions and various integration capabilities with third party system. So let's start, uh, of course, and to talk a little bit about our um, user experience and our user interface, which makes it easy and fast for operators to perform their jobs, solving a number of surveillance related tasks. So custom layouts allow placing cameras on the screen in any arrangement in a matter of seconds. And viewing tiles can be um, have uh, can have basically uh, different aspect ratios uh, and can be automatically configured. So you can also, um, no matter what kind of aspect ratio your camera gives, you can create a layout that will pass exactly to this uh, camera. Uh, recently, we added a possibility of uh, a video wall, which is a tool that allows you to quickly share layouts from the operator screen to any of the monitors connected to other computers, which in turn are connected via TCP IP to our workstation. And from that workstation, um, no video control basically is required. And you can create a layout that you need just from your workstation and send it quickly to the video wall. And this helps you, of course, to manage any incidents that you might draw, want to draw attention to to your other colleagues in the um, workstation uh, or monitoring station room. One of the newest features that we added, and I believe this is a very nice and cool feature, it's quite simple. Uh, you can add links uh, between cameras on the layout. So you can actually have uh, a link uh, to the next camera right in the um, video mode. Is here you can see an example of how this works. And you basically can set up a button. You can also say where this uh, button and with this um, arrow leads to the next camera. So the uh, operator is aware where if he clicks there, where he's gonna go next. So this is a very nice feature. Uh, and you can also uh, basically navigate way easier uh, once you have a one camera view, for example, to go to the next camera and see, for example, what happened next uh, on the next camera. So uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, AI analytics. So uh, these days, uh, AI analytics allow you also to detect not only people, but also their posture. As you can see on the video, each person has a so-called, let's say, skeleton, uh, which is segmented into separate body parts. 
the position of the body parts make it possible to determine a person's posture. Using this information, you can manage, for example, social distancing in public places. Social distancing has become a very popular topic at the moment due to, of course, the uh, COVID-19. Uh, the idea here is that you can actually uh, determine to what kind of distance you need to, uh, the people to uh, keep between each other. And if this uh, distance is crossed, then of course you can get an alarm uh, in the system. Here I would like to show you a little bit more on the side of what we do based on AI object detection. Uh, and let's start a bit with the counting. So one of the things that we can do effectively is of course count visitors. Uh, this is all just for, for example, for marketing for purposes, for safety purposes, you can determine how many people are, for example, in a specific building. One of the main topic, of course, as uh, we talked about social distancing before, is also occupancy, uh, real-time occupancy detection inside a specific uh, area. It can be, for example, a store or some kind of uh, office building. Here, you can basically receive a notification when there is a problem with the, um, with the number of people, if it has been reached the maximum number of people that is regulated to have in your store. You can display, for example, this on a monitor in front of the store, and then based on that, you, uh, people know if they can or cannot go into the specific store. Another uh, video that we uh, saw here, uh, it's, uh, People, uh, um, a tank counter. So here, you if you have, for example, gas gallons that you need to count, uh, this is also possible based on AI object detection. The next uh, object detection counting we have is railroad traffic statistics uh, collection. That means that we can actually count the um, number of wagons, for example, that appear in the image. Here, the video that you see actually has been done, uh, shot from a drone, uh, and it can also be, of course, uh, mounted on the different uh, facilities like you see here in the night uh, video. The next video that we have uh, is actually from one of the latest projects that we did in Denmark uh, on a bridge, uh, and here we uh, check the traffic statistics at specific times. You can see that there is a line crossing that has been created, but we need to count only uh, vehicles. So you can see that motorcycles, bicycles, people, people with um, uh, baby carriages, they are going by and they are not counted. Only vehicles are counted at every single time. And this allows for a specific uh, statistic that you can receive about the traffic monitoring in a specific location. So this is possible based on the AI. Uh, and uh, the main beauty of this is that you ignore other objects that might appear in the picture and you only concentrate on the objects that are important for the end customer. Uh, if you have any questions, I already saw that there was uh, some Q&A. Uh, we have our uh, technical manager, Alexander Herman, joining us today. He will be answering the questions in the meantime. And of course, if you have any other questions that are open in the end, we, will, uh, we can discuss them also in the end in the Q&A. So uh, moving on, uh, what we can do based on AI at the moment, uh, one of the projects that we have uh, is the monitoring parking time. So for this project, we actually needed um, the maximum permitted parking time to be 30 minutes. So the system detects a vehicle and continuously tracks it as a single object. After 30 minutes, the operator receives a notification that the permitted time has been exceeded. So it's a very uh, interesting feature and it's a very interesting uh, idea of how you can work based on AI analytics and just a video camera uh, and uh, utilize this to have the parking permit for a specific period of time uh, checked uh, by the operators. Another e interesting, but uh, of course less common example is monitoring, for example, a wheel state set maintenance. Here people are ch checking basically how the wheels are, uh, in what conditions they are, and you can also, of course, count those uh, wheels and um, uh, also process this event. 
But those events, the beauty of this is that you can actually send them to a third par party ERP software that measures the wheels dwelling time on the platform and counts the top total number, of course, of wheel sets that have been serviced. So it's an uh, industrial uh, application and it's something more specific. Uh, but it's an interesting point of view to see what can be done already with uh, AI object detection. Because exactly as we said before uh, with the cars, here's the same that we only detect the wheel set rather than uh, any human beings that might appear in the picture. Next, we have the gear uh, protective for the um, uh, people who work, for example, on a construction site or in an airport security. So um, we can identify basically um, a hard hat or a high visibility vest. And uh, these solutions are notable because each one uses three different types of neural networks at once. The first there is basically um, detects an individual, uses the second, identifies parts of their body, the head, for example, in the first case, and the upper body in the second. The third neural network determines whether a helmet or a vest uh, is missing in each uh, respective scenario. So this is uh, a great way to uh, utilize this kind of um, protective uh, analytics and to see whether somebody, for example, meets the requirements and wearing the protective gear that they must be wearing in such conditions. Next, uh, to summarize a bit about the pandemic control solutions uh, that we offer and that you can help you uh, to comply with different regulations that you might have in your countries, because specifically now we know, of course, that the regulations might differ from location to location. So, of course, uh, we can, um, with the help of specific camera models, we can offer uh, the possibility to identify uh, the uh, non-contact body temperature measurement. Uh, we have the social distancing that we uh, discussed before. Uh, and of course, we have face mask um, presence or absence detection. Uh, so those are also, of course, here goes the uh, occupancy, the real-time occupancy detection feature. So those are mostly the uh, four uh, solutions that we offer that can help you comply with the regulations. Please note that the cameras that are needed for the uh, fever screening are, of course, the cameras uh, that can um, actually support this feature themselves. And then we can work with the data that we receive from the camera. Uh, so it can be, for example, high vision, Dahua, uh, Mobotics. Uh, so it's uh, whatever cameras are supported also with our software. So this is just to keep in mind. Uh, the great thing here is that uh, based on our macro commands feature in Axon Next, we can also react to such scenarios. And for example, if somebody is not wearing a mask or has a high temperature detected, you can play an automated audio message saying, for example, that wear a mask uh, or um, step aside and wait for uh, somebody to come to check with you the temperature that we have detected, for example, if it's higher. So just uh, keep this in mind that there is also, of course, interactions and reactions to specific functionality that we offer here. Um, when we're talking about uh, AI analytics, uh, what we added uh, recently is, of course, the neural uh, tracker, which uh, recognizes and tracks moving objects of a specific type. It can be, for example, individual or uh, vehicles, as we discussed before. And it's a very good feature for complex scenes with a large amount of non-relevant detail. Uh, so um, you can see uh, from here that AI analytics really uh, help us today to uh, get rid of a false positive result. But please be aware that when we're talking about AI analytics, uh, it does not mean that we uh, will install a filter with AI analytics, for example, for human detection, and it would, will work 100% right away. Um, because of the complexity of the uh, position of the camera, of the field of the view of the camera, the application of the, each filter can differ. 
So uh, that's why we uh, ask our customers who are interested in AI analytics, especially for such things like human detection, vehicle detection, to send us a screenshot and we can offer a better filter that will pass to each location. Uh, this, of course, also doesn't imply that uh, it will work 100%, but uh, what we offer as a service is that we can always work on the filter specifically for each installation, and we can get this filter to work to 95% uh, uh, success rate, and this is uh, um, the main idea of AI analytics, that you can also tailor make them uh, for different situations and in, if it's a tailor-made neural network for specifically for your installation it will work as a charm and you will actually avoid a lot of false positives yet that you might have received in the past but when we talk about tailor-made neural networks we also talk about specific scenarios that can often appear as an issue for each customer and that might have been uh, really difficult to solve in the past but today, if it's a scenario that repeats itself and it has a pattern, then we can create a specific uh, filter just for that situation that will, of course, I'll alert you in the next time this appears. So please keep your mind also open for any patterns that uh, your end users or your customers might have a problem with. And then you can always ask us uh, if something is possible to be done in a specific situation and we can discuss uh, if a tailor-made neural network is actually a solution for your or your customer's problem. And um, uh, last but not least in the AI analytics, uh, of course, is smoke and fire detection. Uh, it's been working already for a while in uh, a forest uh, location in Belarus. It has been a very uh, significant help for the uh, reduction of uh, fires uh, and the damage that is done by fires in the forest area in Belarus and they are helped by the smoke and fire detection of uh, Axonsoft. Um, when we talk about AI of course we must not forget facial and uh, number plates recognition. Uh, so, uh, actually, we have added uh, the ability to create lists uh, of uh, people in our Axon Next Cloud service. Uh, you can, of course, uh, add those uh, people to a specific list and you can share this list uh, in across all servers that you have in your, um, in your system. Uh, and then, of course, you can prevent basically either unwanted visitors or you can uh, uh, be alerted about VIP uh, customers that come in into a specific location. Uh, so it's now um, available uh, officially with the new release and you can use them and, um, uh, of course, utilize them in your projects. The same goes for the license plate recognition. Uh, here, uh, it works um, in much the same way as facial recognition. Uh, you can create basically a watch list uh, which is synchronized between the servers with Axon Net, uh, Net uh, Cloud servers, of course. Um, the system recognizes basically the number that is in the system, and then you can create different kinds of reactions based on the recognition of the number plate. You can, of course, so for example, combine it with an I.O. module and open a gate. Um, or you can send a notification about a specific customer coming in, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So there is also a lot of possibilities that are there. Next, of course, uh, we understand that AI uh, analytics come into play more and more. Uh, and of course, they require uh, a sizable computing uh, resources for this. Uh, so currently, if the number of camera channels exceeds 10 to 20, it's almost impossible, basically. Uh, to build a cost-effective AI video surveillance system without uh, using uh, some kind of acceleration tools. Uh, so to optimize the workload and ensure that our uh, AI analytics operate quickly, uh, we have partnered uh, with Intel for, uh, here and now use their neural accelerators and specialized tools in our products. So for example, uh, one HDDL card uh, handles around 70 human detection channels. So this is a very great uh, opportunity to actually use the accelerator uh, products and uh, to be able to 
bring the AI um, analytics to bigger projects and to utilize those kind of capabilities with just, for example, one accelerator tool. So here, This is very weird. So some of you didn't uh, have any sounds for some reason. And okay, this is quite interesting, but we will drop a link to the um, YouTube video online and you can of course uh, watch this um, uh, with our, uh, basically from the uh, YouTube link that we have on our page. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, okay. But let's continue. Uh, one, just last one thing, of course, is that the main idea here, uh, even though we didn't have an audio, unfortunately, the main idea here remains the fact that with uh, Intel integration, we can now use AI analytics in bigger projects and not just 10, 20 cameras. Because nowadays, the majority of AI analytics projects that we receive, it's uh, one, two, five cameras. And um, this gives basically the opportunity to you and your customers to bring the power of AI analytics to your projects of any size. So next, of course, uh, just to mention our search capabilities that we have, uh, please remember that always this chapter of the search capabilities, you can also use it offline. Um, and this is a great also uh, opportunity to introduce the uh, accent next to some customers. So uh, let's see, and I'll uh, discuss also more what, of course, the uh, search capabilities mean. So first uh, it comes the smart search uh, moment quest, and we have uh, here a moment quest uh, video. So the main idea of uh, Moment Quest is to be able to search in the archive based on different parameters. Uh, so it can be, for example, if it's a person walking, uh, crossing a line, uh, you can always look uh, by, for example, motion in area, cross uh, of a line, object color or size of the object. So basically I would say it's um, kind of a Google search. So you have a lot of different criteria that you can search in your archive. And this, of course, helps you to save a lot of time looking for something specific. So if you know, if you have an idea about what kind of object you're looking for, you can always go into Moment Quest, open it up, search with the criteria that's available and uh, find what you're looking for in a matter of seconds. If you don't know what you're looking for, uh, there is uh, always a time compressor. So a time compressor uh, basically captures all moving objects in the scene at different times and displays them in a short video clip. Uh, using this tool, you can review hours of recorded video in just minutes. So you don't really need to know with time compressor what kind of object you're looking for. Uh, you can just uh, go through the archive view all the objects, but it will be done way faster in a matter of seconds. Uh, face and number plate search is a very great uh, capability to look for people and number plates in your archive. So one of the main, I think, um, uh, also competitive advantages of Axon Next is that you can search for faces and number plates on multiple cameras at the same time. So this is, gives you a great opportunity to search for a specific person in all the uh, available cameras with face recognition that you have. 
And this way you can see where the person was in a specific building or a specific area at what time, and you can have a better understanding of uh, the location. With the number plates, goes the same way. You can search basically, and you can find out where uh, a car has been, has appeared in a specific timeline. But what is very uh, great about the number plate is that you don't even need to remember the full number plate. You can just type in a couple of numbers that you might have uh, remembered from a number plate that you saw. And this, of course, helps you to find the number plate that you're looking for in the matter of seconds. So to sum up here, uh, the great thing is that you can use all those search uh, capabilities with offline analytics. That means that you can install uh, Axon Next on a, a server. You can import any archive or video from an external source. And while it imports, it analyzes the video and you can start searching right away uh, with uh, moment quest, time compressor, face, and number plate search. Then our web client now uh, supports nearly all of the key features of the desktop client. Uh, so this is actually quite a great um, advantage at the moment. So in particular, you can create and alter layouts and add cameras to a layout. Uh, you can display alarms on the alarm panel. So this is a great uh, possibility also, for example, for monitoring stations or for anyone that wants to access easily without any uh, installation, um, just the uh, software and see what is going on. Uh, you can also, of course, perform all kinds of searches, as we discussed before with um, a forensic search. You can view, uh, for example, motion heat maps that you can see. Uh, you can search by vehicle number, view live videos from cameras. So there's a lot of functionality that has been added to the web client and it makes it way easier uh, to access the server, for example, from an external um, source. And of course, it gives you a lot of features for video monitoring uh, right from your browser. Next uh, is our uh, AxonNet cloud service, uh, which is a free cloud service uh, that connects to your AxonNet VMS servers via the internet. It has a TLS encryption, which ensures secure data transmission. Uh, and in the video, you can see how you can connect the AxonNet um, and how simple basically it is to connect there. Uh, you can use your uh, AxonNet credential to access the system via the web client. Uh, you can connect to the domain, receive the talking, and apply to the Axon Next. So it's uh, quite easy to get access. Um, and uh, basically, you can use uh, the application very, very fast. And it gives you a lot of uh, capabilities, uh, such as create uh, the face and light and face watch list that we discussed before. Uh, you can send push notifications on certain events to mobile clients. Uh, and uh, you can, of course, also store and activate Axonex license files. So there's a lot of um, little things that we keep on adding to the Axonex cloud service, and it's becoming more and more integral part of the software that you um, would need to use uh, or would uh, require to use in different situations. So it's a very good uh, uh, and interesting uh, feature. Next, uh, of course, we care about uh, security and uh, we trying to uh, make the product as uh, secure as possible for uh, everything that goes from the secure camera connection, which now supports the RTSPS and RTSP over HTTPS for or on with compliant devices. You have uh, TLS encryption. So we really work hard to keep your um, camera connections safe. Uh, then we, of course, have the security policy, which we keep on adding a lot of different features. Uh, and uh, so, for example, you can store a password history. You can prevent multiple simultaneous sessions. So there's a lot of different things that we add to make your product secure and uh, safe for you to use and for your operators to operate. One very interesting feature that comes into play uh, this time is the system integrity check. 
So whenever you log in, uh, a system integrity check is uh, performed in the background. And if passed successfully, it just adds this record into the system log. If uh, the system integrity is not uh, passed successfully, then you actually have different options that you can configure. And you can, for example, show a warning to administrators or, or users. You can block users without admin rights and you can stop non-vital services. This is a very interesting and um, integral part that I think will help a lot to also uh, prevent any potential um, messing with the, uh, for example, with the digital signature for uh, executable files, basically. So if anything is modified, you, will, uh, you can uh, know about it at any point of the uh, of the software uh, work. We have, of course, uh, keeping in to the spirit with the privacy settings, uh, we have now we are GDPR and CCPA um, uh, compliant. And here we offer uh, different features such as, for example, you can block a specific area, you can also export a video with um, masked out uh, objects. So it's um, a lot of different functionality that we try to offer you that your clients or you can be uh, GDPR or CCPA compliant. One of the uh, interesting things that we also adding uh, now is that you can uh, replicate your uh, archive via interoperability driver. This means that, for example, if you have a project with uh, moving vehicles and you need to sync them, uh, this can be done now via the interoperability driver and it helps you to bring basically all the archive uh, to a centralized uh, video storage. So this is something quite interesting, especially for projects where you possibly can use, uh, for example, um, moving vehicles like uh, uh, different uh, tram services, for example, if it's uh, police vehicles that are going around the city, so if you have an action based NVR, you can centralize those uh, video recordings afterwards. Here's a quick look on the main idea. So here, for example, we have a bus station that once it arrives to, uh, next to a bus station, it actually just things basically, and you can have a centralized video storage for all the recordings. And last but not least, uh, now we have always uh, worked on the system update and how it is performed. So if it's a um, server update, so you can actually update all servers within a cluster in a silent mode. Uh, so basically you get um, a zip archive for a specific web link and then uh, you can automatically update all servers at once uh, without doing much uh, work. And the client update is actually quite easy because uh, if you connect your server with a newer version of Axonex, it will simply ask you uh, to update and um, the update performed automatically. So then this way you can always be up with the newest versions of Axonex. So these are the updates for Axon X 4.4. Uh, we will have, of course, um, also a lot of different updates uh, coming in the future, but you can uh, access the release notes of Axon X 4.4 on our website. And uh, there you can see, because we have over 55 different features that have been added or tweaked, or uh, we have made them even better for your user experience and your customer's experience. So uh, I'm not sure if there's any other uh, questions still pending. Um, so let's see, uh, I see that uh, my colleague shared with you already link to the uh, Intel integration uh, and that's good.
So let's see. If you have any questions, please let me know. Perfect. So we don't have any questions at the moment. Uh, everything has been answered by Alexander. Uh, thank you for joining. Thank you, Kate, for uh, helping us organize the uh, presentation as well. I see some of our partners are already uh, joining as well, and they joined and uh, watched the presentation. So it's very great. I'm very happy to hear that. Okay, I see that there are still some questions. Let's see. Uh, somebody's asking if the uh, new driver for thermal COVID cameras have been released. Uh, yes, you can already add basically the, it depends on what kind of models you are referring to, uh, but you can always uh, check with us and we can uh, see what has been already integrated and what is in the current driver. Uh, basically the idea here is that uh, you, uh, uh, you can, of course, request also cameras that are not integrated and we can integrate them for you. Uh, and we can always check uh, if something is integrated. But uh, the first models are in the driver's pack already. Uh, and of course, just to, to for your information that we all, always receive, uh, release a driver pack around each month or a month and a half. So there are, if there are new models that are added, they will be there uh, after a month or so. So just uh, contact your also local partner and you can always get this information. Uh, Somebody is asking about the quotes for the AI analytics. Um, the pricing is uh, of course available uh, through your partners. So uh, I'm not sure uh, which country uh, you are from. So, but just contact your uh, local representative or local partner and they will be able to provide you all the pricing that you need. Okay, I think that's it. So uh, I would like to, again, thank you all for joining. Uh, it was a great session. And I see that a lot of um, partners joined in uh, and from a lot of different locations. So that's where I'm very happy to see that. If you have any questions, please um, contact us. Of course, uh, you can always find a different uh, partners as well and our offices on our website and you can get the contacts uh, there. Uh, you also will uh, receive some contact uh, information from the uh, from the webinar afterwards that they email so you can of course always get in touch with us thank you very much have a great day uh if you have any of course questions just don't uh don't uh, be afraid to of course uh, contact us at any time thank you very much and have a great day